Today on IODP Expedition 318, Wilkie's Land. Exploring the history of Antarctica. Good morning. Very happy Kochi. Have you seen the ice sheet? Well, you should. This is why we're here, to study this huge ice sheet. Nice ice, baby. Right there, Rob. We've traveled all the way around the world to figure out what's going on. It's the best day of the cruise so far. Great cores, great scenery. Want to see some penguins? Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. I guess. See the ice cap, 3,000 meters or whatever it is. I hate this so much. <laughs> Pretty happy about it. There's a good balance between serious science but also having fun while we're doing it. There's a lot of people on board who've got a good sense of humour and I, I, need to, I need to have my playtime. I need to be silly for a bit. I'm like a, I'm like a three-year-old. Having a, times in the day where you're you know, having a bit of banter with people, being a bit silly, having some fun, and then a bit of guitar at the end of the shift. If I do that, then, then I'm fine. I can keep doing this stuff for months. You realise to do this uh, to do this interview, you've got to try and get me to be serious for more than for ten minutes. The job. The organic geochemist is uh, responsible for overseeing routine measurements. So there's a, a safety role for the organic geochemist. But the, the real scientific reason that I'm that I'm on board is to carry out measurements on biomarkers. Let's take a sample and saw it up and get it ready for biomarker analysis. Now biomarkers are, the way of thinking of them is as uh, molecular fossils. There's a lot of people working on board as uh, micropaleontologists looking at the microscopic fossils. But I'm looking at something that is even smaller, which is fossils at the molecular level. Somewhere in this core, though we can't see them, we know there's going to be molecular fossils that were um, deposited at the time this sediment was forming in the Eocene about 40 million years ago. It's a greenhouse world where there was no ice on Antarctica and we're hoping that those biomarker fossils, we're going to be able to extract them, and they're going to tell us something about the environment and the temperature of that greenhouse world. The science. One of the real strengths of an IODP cruise is that you have these diverse but complementary groups of specialists. So there's the physical properties people, the sedimentologists, people doing magnetism, micropaleontologists, um, and the geochemists. And all of us are, are working together to extract different but complementary data sets from the cores. And working together, they might be able to tell us quite a lot about how those sediments were deposited. Markers that I've seen already in Site 1172, so there's some... So all of these groups are working together, and all of the individuals in the groups are providing pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and then when we put them all together, we get a bigger environmental picture. And using all of these techniques, we can track changes in the environment. Fatty alcohols here, plant waxes and also... This complementary expertise that's been gathered for this expedition has worked really well because we've already seen on the first site when one group or one technique has not been available or not been working, mm -hmm. then there's always been something else there to, to fill in the gap or to, or to provide us with information. So we've had uh, periods of the cores that we're, we were recovering where we weren't getting um, microfossils that could give us an age. But then we also have the, the paleomagnetists who, who are giving us an age constraint so they can kind of fill in when the microfossils aren't providing information. <laughs> Today on Penguin TV, ice, ice, baby. ocean drilling for kids. Ice, ice, baby. Are you Sam? Are you Sam? Sam? Hey, I'm Sam. Which one, you, which one of you birds called me big boy? The big one did. The big one did. Hey, 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 calm down, calm down. Are you the driller? No, I'm not the driller. I'm a tool pusher for Transocean. Tool pusher? Tool pusher? Oh, we push all kinds of tools, but we also push buttons, too. We try to make the uh, management of the drilling uh, uh, operations go smooth. We try to interface with the scientists, keep the cores coming up good, keep the safety levels up good, and keep everybody safe. How does it work? How's it work? How's it work? How's it work? Drilling for core samples. Oh. Oh, see, those sea sauces that we saw earlier. Chaz, where do they come from? Oh, these cores come from down below the sea floor, very deep. You're good. Yeah. Cores. How do you get a 
core. We get a core, we have a core barrel already in place in the drilling string, and then we run down and retrieve it. We have a long wire on the end of our drum. It's kind of like a fishing reel. Fishing you know, reel. We, like we go, you know, I know you like fishing. Can we eat, can we eat the core? Yeah, can you can't eat the core. core. You may try it, but I don't think you'll yes, like it. Yes, yes, we do yes. this thing with the fishing reel line. We retrieve the core back up. When we lay this core barrel out for the scientists, but after we lay it out, we drop another core barrel so we can get back to work again while the scientists are doing their work. Then we set up so we can keep on drilling and coring ahead, try to make everybody happy. See, I told you guys, I told you guys. Can you show us the core? Uh, I can show you some cores, but uh, we just get the cores up for the people and uh, later on we pass it on to the science group. To who? To we who? pass it on to Christina. She's a micro paleontologist. Christina. Christina. Yeah. Is she a big guy too? No, she's a pretty girl. She's not a big guy. Okay. Oh, good, good. All right, Sam. Let's see you next time. See you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go see Christina. The mission. One of the big unanswered questions in paleoclimatology is what's going to happen to ice? What's going to happen to sea level as we continue to see these rising levels of emissions? If we go back to the Eocene period, there was little or no ice at all on Antarctica. And we're trying to get the first sediments that are taken just close to Antarctica. We're all here. Ice, ice, baby. And with the biomarker measurements that I'm trying to do, we really want to extract three key pieces of information. What was the sea surface temperature like? What was the land temperature like? One of the biomarkers we're using comes from soil bacteria. And also, what was the vegetation and the plant types like that may have been uh, blown off or transported from Antarctica into the ocean? I love the smell of hydrogen sulfide in the morning. Remember there's this one time we went coring, we brought up this core, and uh, we didn't get any foramps. Not one stinking foramp, but that smell, smell like, I don't know, victory. So we need to go back to this period. We need to use the Geoides resolution to drill down, to go back in time to a period like the Eocene and see, see what the planet was like. The journey. Just another day at the office. So on all cruises, there's a, a tension between the amount of time that's been allocated to the ship and the scientific objectives. And often you have a number of different research groups and those, those objectives, those sites will be complementary, but sometimes they're also competing as well. This is a forecast I normally use and I look at... This particular European. expedition is kind of even more complicated because of the place where we are. We've got uh, variable ice conditions, icebergs and sea ice. There's also, you know, the very variable uh, weather conditions. It can turn stormy very quickly in the Southern Ocean. So often the initial uh, plan of uh, priorities can, can change and become quite fluid when you're at sea. I mean, you know, it always comes to this. Yeah. It always is the same. All right. Yeah? I know, so no wrong decisions, just decisions. Things have to sometimes be decided um, on the fly. So the decision is made, bring the pipe home as safely as we can. Yes. Times when the coring has slowed down, you know, that's, it gets, you get very tense and you get really, really happy when you achieve the objective. So yeah, definitely you get emotionally involved with the, with the whole process of collecting the, the, the material. Today on Gone in 30 Seconds with Stephen Picard. Very good. So we have gone into uncharted places when it comes to climate change. It seems as though we've been hurled back in time by some sort of geologic time anomaly that has brought us back to the hothouse world off the coast of Antarctica. All sensors are on and we're trying to understand this unusual phenomenon. This enormous leap back through time was probably due to some sort of a disruption along the shelf slope continuum. Truly, we have gone where no drilling bit has gone before.